Now that the jury knows who Morgan Tremaine is, what his background is, and what type of information he gets and how he gets it, they're now going to turn to what he knows about Amber Heard. Let's take a look. In the last episode, we saw how Camille did this brilliant job of setting Morgan Tremaine up to tell his story through his own actions. And we're going to see now how what this accomplished was to set him up to be able to evade the attacks that are going to be inevitable coming from Elaine. Hearsay! foundation. She's going to fling all of these spells that she can at him and they are just going to be weak. They are not going to deter him from his mission. He is going to be too powerful for any of that. Let's see how he does it. And while working for TMZ, were you involved in any assignments related to Ms. Heard? I was. What was the first time you recall working on an assignment related to Ms. Heard? Uh, I believe it was May 27th, 2016. And what was your role in that assignment? For that, it, Ms. Heard was filing a uh, restraining order at a courthouse in downtown Los Angeles. So um, I dispatched camera people to that location. Under what circumstances would you normally send paparazzi to a courthouse? Gonna pause here just to really appreciate this question. <laughs> the way that Camille, by day 22, has figured out how to get what she needs in a way that is not going to be objectionable. This is just top notch. What would you normally do? What were your normal practices? Instead of asking him, did you receive information? Did you, did somebody tell you to be there? Things that would have invited an objection. She is sticking with this story of your practices, how you do things and keeping the focus on that. Elaine really should have been taking notes from Camille because this here is very high level. Uh, only if we had been informed prior. It's not by any means a celebrity hotspot. Um, we would only ever send people there if we had been tipped off that something was occurring and there was somebody present there. And now we see why it was important for her to get that information out in the way she did. Because the inference that the jury is going to be able to draw from this is that they were then tipped off that Amber Heard was going to be at the courthouse getting a TRO. Camille isn't making the mistakes that Elaine has made repeatedly of trying to get something specific that she can't get in, that, that isn't going to be admissible. And so Camille has settled here for the power of the inference. It was a great move, and this is really good information to be drawing out. Uh, let's watch her continue. And what footage was TMZ trying to capture at the LA courthouse on May 27th, 2016? We were trying to capture uh, Amber leaving the courthouse and an alleged bruise on the right side of her face. Now that right there, we were trying to capture Amber Heard leaving the courthouse and an alleged bruise on the right side of her face. What they were trying to do, God, this is good stuff, because the information that they received that Amber Heard was gonna be leaving the courthouse and had a bruise on her face, that was the tip. That's hearsay. <laughs> they weren't going to be able to get that out directly by asking him, what was the tip? And so being able to get it in through the story of what was TMZ doing, I just love this. Pardon me if I keep raving about 
what a fantastic job Camille did structuring this whole line of questioning. But this is really the playground that she has offered up for Morgan Tremaine to be able to <laughs> let his information out, let it shine. What was your team of paparazzi supposed to do while they were at the LA courthouse on May 27th, 2016? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, hearsay and foundation. What were they supposed to do? Right. She's oh. asking for, I, I, I don't think there's a foundation. I, I, I'll overrule the objection at this point. We'll see. And there we see it, the first desperate fling of the hearsay. <laughs> but I feel as amused by this as Ben and Johnny do. Uh, I'm glad everybody finds it as entertaining as I do because it is obviously such a terrible, desperate objection. Elaine has figured out what Camille is up to here and how she's getting it done. She knows that this is serving to get the underlying message out to the jury about what they were told. I mean, how would they know what to do if someone didn't tell them, right? But Camille didn't ask that. It wasn't her question. She asked, what did they do? What, what were you there to do? Judge Azkarati correctly, I think, noticed, eh, that's, he gets to testify about what he was there to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, Elaine. Elaine is suffering right now. This is everything she wished she was able to do in questioning and just doesn't have the skill to pull off. Go ahead, Mr. Tremaine. Can you uh, say the question again? What was your team of paparazzi supposed to do while they were at the Los Angeles courthouse on May 27th, 2016? Their objective was to capture her leaving the courthouse and then she was going to sort of stop and turn towards the camera to display the bruise on the right side of her face, the alleged bruise. She was going to turn to the camera and display the right side of her face, display the bruise to the camera. And he delivers it with that, that raised eyebrow for emphasis. I love how he did that with the communication of the significance of what he was saying without having to say that lion, you know what, <laughs> did this to set him up <laughs> to get this fake bruise that's really a zit <laughs> out there on the front pages of the newspapers so that she can pretend she was beat by Johnny Depp. Yeah, he knows exactly what she was doing. And that eyebrow just lets the whole room know that he knows what she was doing. Did your team of videographers get the shot of Amber Heard? We did. What is the difference between receiving a tip from a news producer at any other source? Um, if it's any other source, it would have to be verified um, by copyright. If it was anything that was received um, th directly through a news producer, then they go through that process to verify uh, the source. So this is some foundational information that he's fleshing out as we get closer to this story about the media that they received from Amber Heard and the difference between information that's received from a news producer and information that's received through the tip line. So this is part of the story of how they're able to say this information was verified by the time it got to me. Again, just by phrasing this all as what does TMC do? What are their practices? Did you do anything to verify the tip on May 27th, 2016 related to Amber Heard? I did not. Why not? Um, because it had come directly from a news producer. And so with that, they were able to get in that 
kind of bolstering, you know, arguably, probably not admissible. Um, you don't normally get to talk about how credible your own information is or, or what you knew. Um, but because they have gone through this process of establishing that this is just what TMZ does and that's how they know their information is good, they're just able to slip that in. Well, it was verified by a news producer, so I didn't have to do any of that. Letting the jury know this was verified. Oh, and by the way, yeah, we did get that shot. Does that mean it had been verified? It means that they had verified that tip and deemed that it was credible and therefore a camera person needed to be dispatched. After May 27th, 2016, were you involved in any other assignments related to Amber Heard? Yes. Can you tell me about those assignments? Um, the next one would have been August 6th, 2016, where um, she was giving a deposition. So what did you do in relation to that tip? I uh, dispatched camera people to a parking lot adjacent to a law office in which she would be arriving to. So we could get the uh, footage of her arriving for the deposition. Now we see that eyebrow is very active again in this session and I'm starting to notice a pattern here that when he's talking about these things that Amber Heard did, these setups, that's when we see this eyebrow get really active. Remember when we were watching the lead up, the what TMZ knew about this whole situation as it was unfolding, it was this August 6th deposition that they called her out when she claimed she had no idea the paparazzi was going to be there. And they reminded her, for the record, she knew perfectly well the paparazzi were going to be there. I think this eyebrow raise is really just Morgan Tremaine's magic trick of just calling out her bullshit. Do you typically send paparazzis to parking lots of law offices? No, not at all. Did you get the shot of Miss Heard on August 6, 2016? We did. After August 6, 2016, were you involved in any other stories involving Miss Heard? Yes, I was. And what story was that? Um, on the 12th, we received a video um, depicting um, Johnny Depp um, slamming some cabinets that was captured by Miss Heard. Well, we've seen now that Morgan Tremaine is not here to mess around. He came here with a job to do, and he is having no hesitation about doing it. Not really quite in line with his namesake, I have to say. You know, I'm not the biggest Harry, Harry Potter fan, but I do recall there was a certain mission that a certain Draco Malfoy was sent on and found himself lacking the callousness, the malice to be able to pull it off, just couldn't drive in the dagger. Not our spicy Draco. Nope, he's not making that mistake. He is going to drive that dagger through her. And in the next video, we're going to see what he brings that gives them the potential setup that they need for the perjury charge. Join me there.